Field's rooming house. Field speaking. Hello. Uh, Lou Costello. Uh, Lou Costello isn't here. This is Lou Costello talking. Oh, are you Lou Costello on the other end? I'm Lou Costello on both ends. All right, all right, wise guy. Where are you? I'm downtown picking up Mrs. Bronson and her daughter like you told me to. Good, good. Now bring them home here right away because Mrs. Bronson has got to get ready for her big benefit show. Now you drive carefully here. Don't worry. Don't worry, he says. Where's Bud Abbott? He's with me. Oh, good. Now you bring Bud Abbott here with you because he's got to help Mrs. Bronson with the show. Now you tell him I said to keep an eye on you because if the cop picks you up for speeding, Costello, he's going to take away your driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? I can't take my driver's license away. And why not? I haven't got a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? What do you think you're running to? Fire or something? Now take it easy. Let's get on to the rooming house. Come on, go ahead. Well, we're here. We've been here already ten minutes. I... I've been chasing you for the last ten miles. You came all the way out from downtown in exactly four minutes. And that's ten miles. Now how did you do it? I can't come up the, out the Hollywood freeway. The Hollywood freeway isn't finished. It is now. Yeah. Well, right, eh? Well, so far, you got five violations. I'm gonna get a ticket, Abbott. Yes, you're gonna get a ticket. You're making a lot of them. First of all, what's the idea of going up that wrong way in the one-way street? You see that arrow on the lamppost? Now, when you see the arrow on the lamppost and it points that way, what does it tell you? That tells you which way the wind's blowing. Yeah. <laughs> the arrow points that way on this street, and on the next street, it points that way. What does that signify? I mean, so one's going down one street and up the other one. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Answer the man. Is that right? No, that's not right. Now, how many people you got in this car? Well, give me a ticket, huh? How many people I got in the car? I said how many people you got in the car. Answer the man. You shut up. I'm sorry, officer. <laughs> all together? Yes, all together. Counting him? Counting him. Me too? You too. Seven. Seven. How many in the front seat? Three. How many in the back seat? One. How much is three and one? That's a hard one, eh? No, it's not a hard one. Well, that's seven, eh? No, it's not seven. Now, how many in the car? All together. All together. Not me? Yes, counting you. Answer the man. You shut up. I'm sorry. All together. All together. Seven. Seven. How many in the front seat? Three. How many in the back seat? One. Now, I'm asking you a simple question. A very simple question. How many people you got in the car? Seven. Three and one is not seven. Three and one never was seven. Three and one will never be seven. What was the idea of driving up on the sidewalk? You think I'm going to drive on a road with those crazy drivers? It's safer up there. Oh, yeah? I'm going 60 miles an hour. 60 miles a minute. 60 miles an hour. 60 miles a minute. 60 miles an hour. 60 miles a minute. This car won't go an hour. That's the violation. Oh, put it in the book. All right. And do you realize you almost hit that old man about five blocks back there? That ain't my fault. He told me. No, 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 officer, I didn't. I told you to give the old man the right of way. Oh, I thought he said get him right away. <laughs> Good thing for you, you didn't get him right away. Back. Oh, no. When I get through with you, you're not coming back. This is nice. Now, who's that lady over on the end? Oh, that's Mr. Bronson's wife. Who's the one in the middle? That's her daughter. Oh, that's Mr. Bronson's wife and daughter. No, no. That's, that's Mrs. Bronson and Mr. Bronson's wife, and that's her daughter. I said, who is the lady on the end? He's a dope, ain't he? <laughs> That's Mrs. Bronson. All right, Mr. all right. Mr. Bronson's wife. All right, that's clear. Now, but who is the girl? That's her daughter. Then that's Mr. Bronson's wife and daughter. Can you can explain it, Lou. Lou, explain see, it. This is Mrs. Bronson over here. You told me that. This, this little girl over here, that's her daughter. Then it must be Mr. Bronson's wife and daughter. It is not Mr. Bronson's wife and daughter. It's Mr. Bronson's wife. I know what I'm talking about. I'll explain it to them. And it's her daughter. Explain will, it. Will you put that into English so that I can understand it? 
Look, officer, let me try to give it to you once straight. Suppose you went to the market and you bought a cow. So I bought a cow. Now, the cow had a calf. All right. Now, who would the calf belong to? Belongs to me. Oh, so you married a cow? Yeah, the smart <laughs> I hope that Mr. Costello's crazy driving didn't uh, disturb you any. Disturb me? I had to send my daughter down to the drugstore to get me some headache tablets. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Mrs. Bronson, surprised. You're just jealous, Abbott, because I'm a better driver than you are, and I'm smarter than you are. You're smart. I'm as smart as you are, you dope. Oh, now, please, boys, boys, don't oh, quarrel over me. <laughs> oh, dear, men are always fighting over me. Oh. They really are. <laughs> I remember when I was a girl. You remember that far back? Hey. <laughs> yes, and there were two boys in our neighborhood who were fighting over me and fighting over me and fighting over me. And today, who do you think they are? Miles Standish and John Alden. I... <laughs> 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 You're so cute. <laughs> you little fat monster. <laughs> oh, it's quite right. <laughs> really sorry. Oh, no, it's quite right. <laughs> Listen, you, how many times do you think you can scare me with this thing? Keep it out of my car. Mrs. Bronson, would you mind holding this for me? Yeah, certainly. I have... <laughs> Scaring people out of their shoes. You're going to get us in an awful mess of trouble, Lou. You were talking from Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> You're satisfied now? You've insulted the woman. Now get right over there and apologize in person. Go on. Apologize. Go on over and apologize to Mr. Bronson. Go on. Apologize. Apologize. Mrs. Bronson. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> it's you, Mrs. Bronson. What's happened? Nothing. I was just giving myself a mud pack. Ah! Well, what was all this with you and Costello? You keep that maniac of Costello away from me. Either he leaves his apartment house or I will. Oh, come, come now, Mrs. Bronson. Let's just think a minute. Didn't I talk Bud Abbott into becoming stage manager of your show? Well, what has that got to do with that overstuffed garbage can Costello? Well, they're partners, dear. If Costello goes, Abbott goes with him. Then your show is gone. No stage manager. Oh, very well. But you keep Costello out of my hair. Oh, oh you got a deal. Uh, Miss Bronson. Yes. Miss Bronson. <laughs> oh, uh, Costello. Come here. How dare you compare this beast to Miss Bronson? Uh, how, how dare you compare Miss Bronson to this... To this, uh, Miss Bronson is no beast. She is a beast. Look, yeah. no, I'll handle this, Mrs. Bronson. Do you, you mind? You better had you, troublemaker. Do you realize I'll never be able to look myself in the face again? That makes two of us. Will you, please, will you please try to keep this idiot in line? I'm trying my best. I've done everything in the world to keep him from being thrown out of here. Look. Didn't I give you boys permission to turn my garage into a gym? My poor car has been standing out in the street for three months. Anything's liable to happen to it. What could happen to it? Huh? Oh, oh, what was it? Well, Mr. Fields, just take it easy now. Just no. Take it easy. Please just take it easy. You've got to brace up. Mr. Was it my car? Oh, pal. You've been such a nice fellow. Nice landlord. Just take it easy. You've got to take this like a man. Take it standing up. Was it my car? Keep your chin up, Mr. Fields. Lou, well, talk. Oh, oh, pardon me, Mr. Fields. Lou. Lou. Oh, no. 
All right, take it easy. Take it easy. Mr. Fields, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but my advice to you is get your shoes resold in, in the morning. You're going to do an awful lot of walking. <laughs> Sorry, pal. It's all right. We did the best we could. <laughs> Poor fella. Couldn't take it. Just couldn't take we it. We did everything we could. That's all. Now, uh, Joe, are you still up? Oh, now, look, please. Well, well, I, I, don't want, I don't want to be annoyed by you. I heard you say something has to go to the flies. Look, will you please keep quiet, keep out of this? I don't know why I ever let Fields talk me into this, uh, fix up this stage here for Mrs. Uh, Bronson. Listen. This is work. This is, this is not play, you know. Uh, no, but you told him you used to be on a stage. Right. I don't know. All, all right, right, all right. Well, forget I about it. I used to be on a stage, too, but they don't give me no job in the well, show. Listen, I'm not going to hang around here all day, you know. I had plenty of, plenty of opportunities, right? All right, yes, I know you had all the opportunities. I would like a chance in this show if you oh, don't. what are you talking about, you and actor? Get out of here. Wait a minute, come uh, here. Joey, wait a minute, Joey. You mean you never saw me in the picture? Oh, certainly not. Where, what? Didn't you see me in that picture, Toast of the Town? Toast of the Town? Yeah. What were you, one of the crumbs? Now get out of here. Stop annoying me. <laughs> Joe. Wait a minute. Get just over. a minute. Just a... Excuse me, Joe. Leave Where Joe alone. Now stop giving orders. Will you stop this? Look out now, you see? Hey, go ahead. Now start some trouble up here. Well, I'm asking you. get you off know. the stage. Go out in the alley if you want to play. I got a nice voice. Why don't you give me a chance to help Mrs. Bronson in the show, so then she'll make up with me, and then it will be What in happy. the world can you do, Lou, will you please? Sing. You can what? Sing. Since when? Now. Since now. Want <laughs> to hear me? You're a, no, 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 I don't want to hear you. Look, I've got to hang this scenery, Lou. The show will be on tonight. The scenery's got to go up. The show must go on. Well, give me a chance. Sit down there and sing, please. Sing to yourself. Go ahead. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Listen to this now, huh? I don't want... Go ahead, sing. Oh, I Boy. love Jeannie with a yeah. light Take this up a little higher, Joe. A little higher. I love Jeannie <laughs> with a light brown hair. Joe, can you hear me up there? And a a little higher. <laughs> oh, I love Jeannie with a light get on the road. Please help a little bit. A little higher. <laughs> Up on that right leg. Up. Up on the right leg. <laughs> you hear me? I said, up on the right leg. <laughs> up on your left leg. <laughs> up on the left leg. <laughs> the right leg. The left leg. <laughs> Around the right. 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 Around the right.
Orchestra down there, smash! You worked hard. Well, it was your own fault, Lou. Why didn't you let me sing? Genie with the light brown hair. All right, all right, all right. Stop it, stop it. I must have lost weight. <laughs> boy, oh boy, did I. Hey. How do you like that? Three pounds heavier. And I took on three pounds. Can you imagine with all the work I did there? <laughs> oh, I don't know. You'll have to give me a rub down, Lou. I gotta give you a rub down. Yeah, it's getting shape again. Well, you better get it now because I think Fields is gonna turn this thing back into a grudge. You know how to give a rub down? You don't. Oh, that's right. You never did. Hey, wait a minute. Fatless Frankie is on the air at this time every day with his reducing program. Turn on the radio. Go ahead. Turn that on and do everything that he tells you to do. Okay. Well, give me, give me, get your rope off. Now, wait a minute. Turn it on and do everything and don't ask any questions. Just listen to Fatless Frankie. He's a guy who can give rub down. You're muscular. Bro. Yeah, but we want to get some of this weight off. You know what I mean, Lou? Okay. Come on. Turn on the radio. Now, the body beautiful hour. Well, 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 good morning. I know that you all have just completed your two-mile run. Now lie down, relax. Stretch your body and you're ready for your rub down. Remember, do everything I say. First, get a bottle of rubbing alcohol or witch hazel. I'll wait. Rubbing alcohol or witch hazel? Rubbing alcohol or witch hazel? Which one do you want? Oh, use either. Use either. Use either? Yeah, sure. I'm too tired. <laughs> Rub gently. Gently at first. Rub gently now. Get a bottle of soothing skin lotion. Hmm? <laughs> I think I got, got it near the room. <laughs> Before we go on with the rubdown, here is a helpful hint from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, Fatless Frankie's presented daily by your friendly squeak and rattle body fender company. Today we take pleasure in giving instructions on how to paint your car at home. <laughs> you all ready? Put everything else aside and get some sandpaper. <laughs> get a nice large piece of good rough sandpaper. Now check the body. Does it have rust marks, scratches, or any kind of blemishes? If it has, sandpaper them off. <laughs> now look the body over carefully for dents or bulges. <laughs> Have you found any bulges? Get a hammer and hammer it out. A 
Does the body have a spare tire? <laughs> and remove the spare tire. What's the wrench going to do? Now we're ready to paint the body. Choose a paint color combination to your liking. Gray and green, blue and gray, or black and green. <laughs> Get the paint ready. <laughs> Here we go. Give the body a good coat. Will you hold these for me, please? I'd be delighted. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you.